Hello, this is Yaakov Fein, lesson number eight. Today we'll talk about using the keyword class in TypeScript to declare a custom type. We are in chapter two of the book TypeScript quickly. Let's read a little bit and then I'll illustrate you certain things. I'll show you certain things. So class is a new way, well, new from 2015 in JavaScript to declare a type. Uh, in other programming languages, classes are like blueprints. You have a blueprint, for example, in Java, class person, and then separately you can create objects of type person. But in JavaScript, everything was dynamic, and in JavaScript you, would cre you, you were able to create, and you are still able to create an object of, that uses another object as a base type. Think about it. Not the class as a blueprint, separate entity, but you, you create an object, you define it somehow, and then you can say that, you see, this is object A, and now I want to create an object B based on the type of object A. There was, this is so-called prototypal inheritance, uh, an object B can extend object A using the prototype. In 2015, JavaScript introduced new keyword class to make it in line or to simplify the reading and writing the code in JavaScript. Uh, and it still is a, a syntax sugar over the prototypal inheritance implemented under the hood. When I say inheritance, I mean the class A can uh, inherit from class B or vice versa. Let's uh, look at this keyword first. So in this, in chapter uh, two, we, we define a class person with three fields, three properties, first name, last name, and age. Then we create an instance of it and initialize the properties. Let's, let's do it in typescript land.org in play, playground. Actually, I already have something over here. Let me erase it. Class person. I define a new type person. In there, I will have a name of type string, right? And I will have an address. See, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't like something. Uh, as usually, it has no initializer, it doesn't like it. I can either assign some uh, empty value in there, empty string, or I can turn off this uh, compiler's option, strict property initialization. I don't want it for, for our purposes, we don't need it. Let's say age, uh, this will be the other property. Uh, this is of course of type uh, number. So I define the class like this and then I create, I can create an instance of this class. I will declare a variable uh, purse equal new purse. New purse. So if you want to be able to have a type and construct it using the new keyword, you need a class. Remember in the last lesson we used the type keyword to define a custom type. But now it's a class and the class in particular allows you to create a new object using the new keyword. So uh, in this case I didn't declare any constructor of the, in the class person, so default constructor will be invoked. Default meaning it, it won't do anything. Uh, with our name and age and so on. Because of that, I need to manually uh, pass uh, values to these properties. Say age is equal 29, and the person name is equal what? John. John. Okay, we are done with this part. So we create an object of type person and we initialize its properties or fields. By the way, uh, right now the spec, the JavaScript spec, uh, introduces a concept of fields. Fields is in the stage three proposal in TC39 committee, and pretty soon it'll be officially published as a spec, but for now it is not. That's why, as you see over here, 
class person, the compiled version of the class, which, and we used what? We used as a target ECMAScript 217, but actually we, we could do this even with 2015. Classes were supported, but there, there is no field in those specs yet. It'll, it, it's coming, and pretty soon you will be able to define, even in JavaScript, you, de you will define, you'll be able to define fields like this. Of course, there are still no types, but you will be able to define these classes like this. Some browsers already supported, but, but it's, not, it's not official just yet. That's why you don't see any of these here. So we define a class person, and this class has a default constructor, meaning we didn't define it explicitly, and it has two properties, name and age. Now let's try to define this class in a more concise way. So what I can do, I can say I have a class person and I can define a constructor in there. Basically a constructor is a method in the class. Functions that are sitting inside the class are methods. So uh, it's a special method that is invoked only once when the object is being constructed. In our case, when we create new person, if the class person had a, an explicit constructor, it would be invoked once. And let's create one. Uh, what I will do, I'll show you a shorter syntax for defining these properties. Instead of explicitly declaring name and age, like I did over here, what I could do, I could just say that this class has a constructor. By the way, this is a special keyword. Uh, if you want a class to have a constructor, you have to use this keyword constructor. This is not the same as in Java, for example. In Java, if a method is, has the same name as a class, then it's a constructor. But in here, you have to say constructor. So I have a couple of, I want to have a couple of fields over here. One of them is name of type string. And the other one, I want to have age of type number. Typically, constructors are used to initialize the property of the object based on the parameters given to the constructor. So in traditional programming languages with uh, classic uh, class syntax, uh, you, would, you, would, you would read something like this, dot name, name is equal name. But in TypeScript, it's much easier. In TypeScript, they said, if you will use one of the property, one of the access initializer, like, for example, public, it could be public, private, protected, and one more keyword, read only, then, 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 it'll be assumed, TypeScript compiler will assume that you want these arguments to become class or object properties. Meaning you don't need to write this dot name equal name, this dot number equal num, sorry, this dot age equal age, right? So by doing this, take a look at the generated code in JavaScript. Just because I was using this keyword public, I could have used private if need be, I could have used protected. Just because of that, the JavaScript code assumes and know that I want these two to be object properties. What's the difference between these keywords, public, private, protected? These are access initializers. If I have a property of type, property or method of type public, it is accessible from outside of this object as well as inside of this object. If I would be using the keyword protected, for example, like this, protected, right? Uh, then uh, this uh, property would be accessible only from this object or its descendants. If I'd be using the keyword private, this property would be accessible only from the class, not only from within the class code uh, and nowhere else. Yeah, so, all right, so let's you know, in this case, I'm not planning to use protected, so let, let's keep public. Now, the initialization becomes much easier. I don't need to do it separately. I can initialize property 
as soon as I create an instance, while creating an instance, right? So the first is name, so I will initialize with John. And the second one, see, it, it helps me, it tells me you are not doing it right because I expect two arguments, but got only one, all right, no problem, we'll get, we'll get you the second one, 29 year old, right? Nice help, very good. So, you see, this, the syntax is much more concise. And now imagine if the class has 20 properties. Uh, you don't need to declare them, you just declare the arguments in the constructor. All right, great. Now, let me show one more thing. Let's say you still can define uh, properties as, uh, as regular ones. Let me define address. Address. Maybe I don't want to pass it uh, through the constructor string right now if i want to remind you one keyword in uh, javascript const if you have a value of the variable that has to be initialized only once then you use the keyword const but if you are using classes you cannot use const over here for example if i would want to have a, a an address uh, unchangeable, unchangeable. I cannot use const inside the class, right? But if I want to uh, to make it read read only, I mean assign it and never change, then I could use this special keyword in TypeScript, read only, read only. So this is allowed. If you use read only, you have to initialize it uh, again based on this uh, keyword strict property initialization. If if you, if I would turn it on, if I would turn it on, it will start complaining, saying um, it's a, uh, the property address has no initializer uh, because I didn't use it in the constructor over here, and I didn't initialize it immediately over there, so it, it, it wouldn't it would complain. So I can again either turn off that uh, keyword sorry, not keyword, the compiler's option, or I could just assign a string to it, for example, something like this. I just wanted to show you that there is a keyword read-only that you use within the class instead of const, right? And one more thing. Mm. I want to illustrate you that the class keyword in uh, JavaScript is... Uh, basically just a, a syntax sugar. So under the hood, it's still uh, a, a prototype-based uh, relations between objects, between instances of the object in JavaScript. Mm, let's, let me show you something. Class person, as any other class, as any other object, in JavaScript has the property called prototype. So let, let me show you how I can, as a matter of fact, no, let me, first let me declare a method in the class. And then I'll show you how I can change it by using the prototype in JavaScript. So let's say I have a method say hello inside the class person. Uh, and this method, this method will print console.log back tick, uh, hello, and we will use the property this.name, right? So uh, what do we do? We do dollar sign, curly bra braces, this uh, dot name. In our case, it would print hello, John, right? Let's, let's see if this is the case. Person dot See, it helps me with hello world, with, sorry, we say hello. And that's, that's all there is to it. Let's open up the console. Let's open up the console and we will see what, what is going to print. Run. See, it prints hello John down there, as expected. So, but to show you that class is just a syntax sugar for regular JavaScript object, what I will do, I will 
on the fly dynamically i will assign a function say hello on the prototype of the object person and it'll change the behavior and this is how you can do this person person dot see there's a property prototype like with any javascript object uh, dot i want to define say hello in there as a function right and in there i'll use this, this similar body but instead of uh, saying hello uh, name i will say goodbye goodbye see what i did i had a I mean, I'm a bad guy. I decided to make fun of somebody who created the class person. So I rewrite basically on the fly. I rewrite the method say hello. This is not something that I would recommend you to do. I just wanted to show you that under the hood, objects still use prototype property. And let's, um, let's run it. See, it says goodbye, John. I, I define say hello like this inside the class which did not stop me from redefining say hello on the prototype of the object so this concludes my first introduction to classes for now just remember you can use classes to define custom type class can have properties these properties can have uh, access level qualifiers such as public protected and uh, private uh, you, you can also use the keyword read only with class properties and what else uh, to use a shorter notation for defining properties of the properties of the class you can just use these qualifiers as with the, the arguments of the constructor of the class so basically i believe this is all there is on classes in chapter two We'll come back to classes a bit later. We'll talk about abstract classes, inheritance. But for now, for defining custom types is good enough. In this case, in chapter 2, listing 15 shows you, shows you uh, the class block. In this class block, I have a constructor with four arguments. Each of them is marked as read-only, which makes each of them a property of the class. On the other hand, I have a couple of properties defined explicitly. Uh, I'm, let's not worry about what the block is for now, but it's just, just an illustration of a class as a custom type. Thank you for watching. This was lesson number seven, uh, covering a fragment from the chapter two in the book TypeScript Quickly. This was Yaakov Fein.